Guggenheim is cooking up a positive outlook for Darden restaurants, initiating coverage of the buy rating and a $170 price target, saying the company will continue to take market share from its competitors despite a challenging backdrop. Guggenheim senior analyst Gregory Frankfurt joins us now. Uh, thanks for being here. So as you look at Darden, what makes it sort of, is it executing better in this environment? You also talk about in your note that there just aren't a lot of other companies doing exactly what Darden does right now. Explain to us why. Yeah, I mean, Darden has been the best in class full service operator for the last um, several years. Their execution, their comps are, have significantly outpaced peers. Um, and it's part of the reason why they get a premium multiple. The shares traded 12 times EBITDA. And a lot of the other peers that are of lower growth are trading at six to eight times. And we think the valuation is, is deserved and more some. Greg, I'm on the uh, the Olive Garden website right now, of course, uh, owned by, by Dar. And, and for Valentine's Day, they're teasing $18 wine bottles, $6 take-home meals. Those are really good deals. I mean, is that a sign oh. that they're having problems getting traffic into the restaurant, given they have had to raise prices? And do you see them having to promote more? No, I think that's a sign that they're trying to capture the uh, the romantic customer over over uh, <laughs> Valentine's Day. But th th to be honest, marketing spend is down from 3% of sales before COVID to just over 1% of sales. Um, the consumer remains extremely healthy. Uh, we've seen no evidence that they've really had to cut prices in any way um, or, or increase discounting in, in any way. Um, it seems every indication we have is that January for the consumer has started off extremely strong. Um, and, and, and we think that's going to really benefit Dart. I mean, you've seen a couple large earnings reports from restaurants, McDonald's and Starbucks, where the U.S. comps were up 10. Um, I think that's evidence that the consumer is very healthy in spending at restaurants right now. Does this look like a Darden restaurants operation that has already started recession proofing its business? And, and is it recession proof? You know, that's a great question. They really did not comp down materially during the last recession. And I think that part of the reason for that is the fact that Olive Garden is a lower price uh, offering than many of its peers. Um, the the, the never-ending possible is a great value um, for, for Olive Garden and for Darden as a whole. Um, but but so they, they weathered the last recession relatively well. Um, I don't think any full service restaurant company is going to um, be completely immune from challenges if we get them. Generally as a whole, full service restaurants saw six to 8% negative comps uh, during the last recession, Darden just happened to outperform materially. Are they going to be able to hold the pricing on something like that never-ending pasta bowl, right? Or are, you, are we going to see um, either price increases abate or even prices go down a little bit to keep those customers coming in the door? We, we, we have seen them increase prices. They've actually taken prices up year over year about 6%, um, which is less than most restaurants. Most restaurants we're seeing are taking prices up 8 to 10% right now. Darden has taken them up a little bit less than peers, um, but but no company. I mean, the, the restaurant industry right now is dealing with 10 to 15 percent food inflation, 8 to 12 percent labor inflation, a quit rate that remains at 5.6 percent. If in the most uh, recent Jolts survey, um, well above four and a half percent from before COVID. So there are a lot of cost pressures in this business. Everyone's taking pricing. Darden is just taking a little bit less than peers. Great. We just had uh, Kevin Hockman on, the CEO of uh, Brinker, uh, and they had a, a blowout quarter from Maggiano's. And, you know, just listening to hear you talk, Olive Garden is set up for another good quarter as well. Is, is just Italian food coming back in favor? Is there something about these flavors that are working in this current environment again? I think Italian always works. I mean, it's, it's the big categories in this industry, um, Italian, steakhouses, uh, the large players seem to find success. And I, I think Olive Garden is is going to be right there with Maggiano's in terms of a, a sales, a strong sales uh, performance in the coming quarter. Um, we model, we're a few points ahead of the street, and we think the top line trends are going to continue. Um, generally, we're thinking that restaurant sales are going to be pretty strong for the next three to six months. These are businesses that had all invested a lot in curbside pickup to go. How has that held up from your perspective, especially given the growth in the digital ordering that many businesses have just had to layer into how they operate and, and how they facilitate that connection point with the consumer? Yeah, I, it, it's, it's a fantastic question. I think um, delivery is definitely going to stay higher than it ran uh, before COVID off premise. Generally, uh, we are seeing some degradation in sales. I mean, Chipotle is one example where you look uh, t last year, they were 24% of uh, delivery in the quarter. 
Um, and this year in the third quarter, they were 17% of sales. So there is some waning in terms of what off-premise is, is doing and, and how consumers are behaving. They are getting back to uh, somewhat normal behaviors, but I think our expectation is that you continue to see uh, a level, uh, even out at a level that remains above where uh, pre-COVID levels were. Gregory Frankfurt. We're, yes, double, we're, we're in a double date. Me and Brian are double dating uh, on Valentine's Day. Avgarn, we're going to do it. We didn't tell you, Julie. Hey, can, I, can I join you I'm guys? I'm just totally kidding. Oh, I'm totally, oh there you go. Greg. I heard you were going to White Castle. Through White Castle's Greg. doing their Valentine's Day, uh, Greg. I thought you were going there. If, it's okay. If not, uh, no, maybe. <laughs> I mean, Olive Garden's great, if, but if my husband took me to Olive Garden for Valentine's Day, <laughs> <laughs> not sure how that would fly. All right, Greg and I'm senior analyst Gregory Frankfurt. Thanks so much Thanks, for guys. being here. Appreciate it.